Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another one of these talking at the camera type videos because I had a message from Chris who asked me about a particular piece of email spam he had got that talked about the history of the space pen. Now, if you haven't heard the story, it goes something like this. In the early 1960s, NASA was of course planning to go to space, and as part of this they looked at everything involved in space travel. Obviously they looked at the rockets, hence rocket science, but they also looked at, you know, uh, living in space, eating in space, pooping in space, and of course writing in space. They assigned a crack team of engineers and scientists to investigate this problem. They spent millions of dollars and years of time studying the problem, and after it all, they came out with this space pen, a magnificent piece of engineering that could write upside down, it could write in zero gravity, it could st work in the vacuum. The Russians, the story says, used pencils. Now, the first thing I should say is this story is a load of rubbish. If you actually go on the internet, I looked at uh, Snopes.com, they're great at uh, dealing with urban legends. They have an example of this mail which purports, well, assigns the cost of the mythical space pen to be $12 billion. I've no idea how somebody managed to inflate it to that amount, but uh, it is complete rubbish. The space pen was actually uh, designed by a private individual, and subsequently it was sold to NASA, and it was later sold to the Soviets. You see, writing in space is not as trivial as you might imagine, hence the space pen. If you use a pencil, in space, a traditional wood and graphite pencil. First thing to realize is as you're writing, little bits of the, of the lead, of the graphite nib, will break off. And these little fragments will float around in the cabin until they get into somebody's eyes or lungs, or even worse, they could get into a control panel. And uh, graphite conducts electricity. It also burns, making it a double thread. Uh, after the Apollo 1 fire, pretty much anything that could be combustible inside a spacecraft was treated with great scrutiny. So pencils weren't the ideal solution that they were purported to be. Uh, also in some missions they used uh, grease pencils, right? These are essentially like a wax uh, pencil down the middle with a paper wrapping which can be peeled off over time. These are fine, but again you have to dispose off the wrappings and, and you also have the whole combustion problem. So yeah, both space agencies used pencils and various other variants for a while, but ultimately the space pen did make it into space. So as to the actual problems of writing in space, we should uh, address those. Now, without gravity, many writing implements will not work, simply because gravity is what pulls the ink down the pen. If you try writing with a pen upside down, it won't work. That's easy enough, but Outside of the cabin, there's also the problems of vacuum, which can cause inks to evaporate far too quickly, and uh, of a very wide temperature range, which can go from below freezing to above boiling point. And you can find your ink either uh, boiling away really rapidly or freezing completely and it not working. The space pen, uh, designed by Fisher Corporation, I believe, um, it is in a nice metal case and inside it contains a pressurized ink cartridge which forces the ink down. Furthermore, the ink itself is a specially formulated uh, thixotropic ink, which means it's like a non-Newtonian fluid. It will only flow when the ball bearing is rotating and applying a shear force to the ink. Uh, that's a rough way of describing it. The point is the ink is like a gel normally, but uh, when you're writing with it, it will flow, especially when you account for the pressure. So uh, it, it also handles the temperature ranges exceptionally well. Now, uh, the metal case, this space pen was of course built exceptionally well as well. And funny story, the pen that went with Buzz Aldrin to the moon was uh, donated, I believe, to the San Diego Museum. And they had a fire, and that was one of the few items that actually survived the fire. So there is a testament to its survival. There is one other space pen story which is worth talking about, and that is, again, during Apollo 11. Now, after the EVA on the surface, Buzz Aldrin came back to the cabin, and they were preparing for liftoff, and Buzz noticed something on the floor. This was the head of a circuit breaker. 
that was uh, on his side of the cabin. Apparently he must have bumped it with his backpack and knocked it off. Without this, the circuit breaker would not function. And as it happens, this particular circuit breaker controlled the circuit, which would ensure the flight computer would be able to fire the main engine, main ascent engine, and return them to space. Without this, they would be in some trouble. As it turns out, they could really have just pushed the pushed a button to fire the engine if necessary, but Buzz came up with a better solution. He uh, figured out that he could depress the circuit breaker and hold it closed by pushing a pen into the hole. And uh, the Fisher Corporation, um, they like people to think that it was actually the space pen, but it turns out that it was actually a plastic felt pen. The reason being, if you're going to hold close a, an electrical circuit breaker, you don't want to be doing it with a piece of metal. You want to be doing it with a plastic thing that won't conduct electricity, either into you or into some other circuit. So yes, the history of the, or the myths of the space pen, they're both rubbish. <laughs> But the space pen is an amazing piece of technology. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.